The Red Hair Pirates are some of the most mysterious and powerful characters in One Piece. And as Shanks is joining the race to become Pirate King, we are finally learning a ton of new stuff about his origins and true powers. So here is the complete story of Shanks and his crew. Starting with Shanks' hometown. In chapter 434, we learned that Shanks was born in a town somewhere in the West Blue. And the only random fact that we have about this place is that it makes fine wine? Okay. However, he did not stay there for long as only one year after Shanks' birth, the former Pirate King Goldie Roger found Shanks in a treasure chest after his legendary battle on God Valley with the pirate Rocks Dizabek. In One Piece film Red, which actually dropped a lot of new canon information about all of the Red Hair Pirates, it is heavily hinted that Shanks is from the Figurland family, which we only know because it was specifically mentioned by the leaders of the world government during that film. And while we know nothing else about this mysterious family quite yet, the fact that they are specifically mentioned by the five elders here means that the Figurelands are very likely a family of celestial dragons. Now, this makes sense because we do know that there were celestial dragons present on God Valley during the battle between Roger and Roxy's a back. And it would also explain why Shanks is able to get a private audition with the Gorosei. But regardless of his true family, little baby Shanks is now a part of the crew of the first Pirate King. And he, along with his childhood friend Buggy the Clown, become apprentice pirates on the crew at a very young age. In fact, even before the age of nine, Roger already gives Shanks the iconic straw hat, and by the time that Shanks is 12, he is fighting alongside the rest of the crew, as we see in their class against Roger's former rival Shiki or against a young Whitebeard. Not a, exactly the world's greatest parenting, I would say. Now, Shanks is 13 during that battle with Whitebeard's crew, and it was here that Shanks' faded rivalry with Blackbeard first begins. Now, after that battle, Shanks and Buggy realize that the young Blackbeard appears to not sleep at night, and while Shanks initially thinks that this sounds incredibly fun, their conflict will come to shape the future of the entire one Peace worlds. But speaking of Buggy, these two have a particularly long history and friendship. They fought many battles together with Roger's crew. Shanks was the one who hilariously caused Buggy to accidentally eat his devil fruit, and Shanks even stayed behind with a sick Buggy when Roger and the rest of the crew finally went to Love Tail. Both of them cried together after Roger disbanded the crew when Shanks was only 14 years old, and while these two friends eventually separated after Roger's execution, Shanks still knows how how to get under Buggy's skin, as we see during Marine Fort, when he tricks Buggy with a promise of a fake treasure. And of course, this rivalry is bound to continue in the current storyline because, by some strange twist of fate, they are both currently Emperors of the Sea. Okay, so after Roger's death, we now move beyond Shanks' time with Roger. At the age of 17, he sets out to find a crew and become a great captain himself. Now, it is well known that during his younger days, Shanks had legendary duels with the strongest swordsman in the world, Dracul Mihawk. According to Whitebeard, these duels were such powerful clashes that they left the entire world desperate to know who had won each single fight. Now, however, these two have a very curious relationship. They were obviously fierce rivals, but after Shanks lost his arm, Mihawk refused to continue fighting him. Mihawk really seems to regret that his most challenging rival can no longer use his stronger swords arm. Despite this though, Mihawk still shows Shanks tremendous respect as he refuses to fight against him during the war at Marine Fort. And even more than that, Mihawk is the one who brought Luffy's very first bounty poster to Shanks in chapter 96, so it is very likely that he actually holds Shanks's Viver card, as how else would he just find the elusive Red Hair Pirates? So it does look like Shanks and Mihawk have indeed become very close friends over time. And even though both Mihawk and Buggy declined joining the Red Hair Pirates, Shanks did end up gathering a a truly impressive crew after Roger's execution, most of which actually appear in the very first chapter of the story. This core group of members are known as the Red Hair Pirate Executives. Starting off with Ben Beckman, the vice captain who surprisingly is a serious womanizer, a gun specialist, and the smartest character 
from the entire East Blue. Similar to Rayleigh or Zoro, it is said that he's not too far away in power from his captain. He's even strong enough to make an admiral like Kizaru hesitate, and it is also suggested that he is the one who took the arm from Eustace Kit. Next up, quite unsurprisingly, Lucky Roo is the Red Hair Pirate's cook because we fittingly almost never see him without a slab of meat or a drink. This fun-loving mountain of a man fights with a gun and also by rolling his massive body into a bowl to smash into opponents. Interestingly enough, he's also the very first person to actually kill somebody in the story, aside from Roger's executioners. Along with Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo, Usopp's long-lost father Yasop always appears whenever Shanks' crew shows up somewhere. And much of what we love about Usopp seems to be also true about his father. They're both jokers who love to encourage the crew to have fun, although Yasop is clearly sweating about meeting his son after abandoning him at a young age. Naturally, Yasop is also a god-level sniper and Shanks recruited him specifically because it is said that he never misses his targets. And while we know much less about the rest of the crew, we did learn a little bit more about the main officers from the booklet that was handed out alongside the movie film Red. For example, Lime Juice here apparently fights with his staff charged with electricity and likes to jump around in the air, similar to Sanji. With his electricity theme, he could possibly clash with Nami one day as well. Next, we have the duo Bonk Punch and Monster, who are each listed as officers, even though they are fighting as a team. This pair are the musician of the crew and possibly even inspired Luffy to have a musician on his own crew as well. Bonk Punch fights by charging up devastating punches, while Monster takes care of the weaker enemies who try to stop his partner. Next, Building Snake is the navigator of the crew, and just like Nami, he sports some very serious ink. He fights with two swords that he apparently juggles in the air, and he also has a signature stomp kick that he uses to finish enemies. And then we have Hongo, the doctor of the Red Hat Pirates, which while all the other crew members love to party, he seems to be one of the more serious members. He was also the one who, after Wano, reminded Shanks that Luffy's ally Bartolomeo was causing problems in one of their territories. And it was actually this reminder that convinced Shanks to avoid meeting Luffy just yet. Naturally, Hongo has incredible knowledge of medicine, but is surprisingly knowledgeable about weapons as well, as he's said to be able to take apart any weapon instantly. And while holding Gap here looks really ferocious, he apparently has a quite kind personality and is even timid when not in battle. However, when he does fight, he uses this powered roar blast to wreck enemies from a distance. I can only imagine him and Frankie shooting laser beams at each other from a distance. And we're also told that he can even use paralysis to take out opponents. Then we have also Rockstar, and while he has only joined the Red Hat Pirates more recently, he seems to be a trusted messenger who is tasked with communicating with other pirate captains. He's a prideful man who fights with a sword and seems to be able to use it like a drill. And in general, we can also assume that all of them are ridiculously strong with the ability to use both armament and observation hockey, as even the Marines acknowledge that the Red Hat Pirates are an equally balanced fighting force. Although it has to be said that no one in Shanks' crew has eaten a devil fruit, which makes me wonder, do they just really like to swim or could it be that Shanks knows a secret condition of getting to love tail that requires not having a devil fruit? Whatever the answer is, the Red Hat Pirates are of course a true powerhouse crew and we will of course discuss everything we know about Shanks' ridiculous powers later on in this video. However, there is one other member of Shanks' family that we have yet to discuss. When Shanks is 20 years old, he finds a baby girl in a treasure chest. This is of course Uta. And while this was shown to us explicitly in One Piece film Red, we actually don't really know if these childhood events of the movie are an actual part of the canon storyline. What we do know is that Uta seems to appear in a single panel here in chapter 1055 next to baby Luffy, Momo and Hiyori, which seems to make her backstory canon. And so maybe because Shanks was also adopted in the very same way, he takes in Uta as part of his crew. Uta grew up with the Red Hat Pirates and also befriended a young Luffy, with the two forming a fierce rivalry and friendship when Shanks visits the Goa Kingdom, Luffy's hometown. And while Uta displayed her crazy devil fruit power in film Red, none of the other Red Hat Pirate officers have their own devil fruits. However, they did have an interest in one particular fruit. Right before we meet them in chapter 1, they had just stolen the mythical sun 
one got Nika fruit from a world government ship. Now what is unclear is if Shanks knew the true powers of this fruit and its awakened form, or if he just stole it by random chance. But come on, do we really believe that this was a coincidence? And if this was actually intentional, then was he trying to find the next Joy Boy? And if so, who did he have in mind to eat that fruit? These questions make me really wonder what exactly Roger's last words were to Shanks that made him cry so much. Could he have told Shanks to find this fruit and to guide the next Joy Boy to find the One Piece? I mean, it is certainly possible. Especially because suspiciously enough, many former Roger Pirate members are scattered along the path to Love Tail, seemingly ready to help Luffy whenever the time arrived, like Crocus or Rayleigh. But again, we have to ask, was this really to help Luffy? Or does Shanks have his own motivations for wanting Luffy to succeed? And all of that has happened to Shanks before we even started chapter one. It is at the start of the story when we first meet a 27 year old Shanks and the crew in the Goa Kingdom, Luffy's hometown. And here Shanks inspires Luffy to become Pirate King. He even sacrifices his good arm to protect Luffy and gives him the straw hat before he leaves the island. We've actually only recently learned that Shanks already had a bounty of over 1 billion berries in chapter 1. An insane amount that tells us that Shanks was already a world famous pirate just 12 years after Roger's execution. However, unfortunately, after this chapter, we barely ever get to see Shanks in actual action. 10 years after after first meeting Luffy in chapter 96, Shanks is 37 years old now and we see him throw a party after Mihawk brings him Luffy's first bounty poster. Next we see him twice trying to warn Whitebeard about Blackbeard, once via messenger and once in person. And when the two emperors meet, both Shanks and Whitebeard talk about scars that ache because of Blackbeard hinting at his importance for the future. This is, by the way, also the very first time that we hear about hockey and see what the power of Conqueror's hockey can actually do. But this is, of course, nothing compared to Shanks' biggest hockey feat that we will discuss a little bit later in the video. And while all of these examples are kind of brief, Shanks' first major involvement after Chapter 1 comes during the war at Marineford. First, he stops the strongest creature in the sea, Kaido, from coming to the battle in the first place, and then Shanks does this, stopping the rampaging Akainu who even Whitebeard couldn't keep down. With Shanks' arrival, the war at Marineford immediately ends, as not even Blackbeard or the fleet admiral Sengoku are willing to fight the Red Hair pirate crew. In fact, we learn that Shanks has earned great respect from Sengoku, something that no other pirate has done since Whitebeard. And boy does he deserve it, as we see Shanks respectfully burying both Ace and Whitebeard after the war. He's not not just a badass, but he's a classy dude as well. Now, if you're an anime only watcher, you might not know that it is possible that Shanks is actually married and has a kid. And no, I'm not talking about Uta. While this isn't officially confirmed, there are a few cover pages from the manga that show Shanks at a wedding, and Makino, this barkeeper from chapter one, who Shanks was kind of fond of, with a wedding ring and a baby. If this is true, it seems that Shanks has been doing a lot more than just sitting around and drinking booze, if you know what I mean. Now, after Marineford, we don't see him again in the main story until chapter 903, when he's reacting to Luffy's bounty after Whole Cake Island. During this appearance, the now 39-year-old Shanks claims that Luffy is still not quite ready to meet him, which makes me think that he is waiting for Luffy to awaken the Nika fruit and become Joy Boy. Just another clue here that he did really know what that fruit was when he stole it. However, fortunately, we didn't have to wait too long until his next appearance, because we actually see him again just four chapters later, doing something that no one would have expected. He had a private conversation with the Gorosei themselves. In a scene that is still unexplained, Shanks went to discuss a certain pirate with the five elders, who are for some reason completely comfortable being in the very same room with Shanks. And while we don't know who he is actually talking about here, it is likely either Blackbeard or Luffy, and it does make me wonder if he was warning them that Luffy could soon be awakening his death 
devil fruits. Now, you might be wondering why would Shanks tell them about this, but there is just so much that we don't know about Shanks' past and his motivations. Remember that Shanks likely comes from the Figurland family who could be celestial dragons. This could explain how he is able to meet with the Gorosei in the first place, and if that wasn't strange enough yet, in the very next chapter the Gorosei are discussing a great cleansing for the world, so what did Shanks tell them that led them to that conclusion? Whew, so many questions after just that one scene, and things get even more intense after Wano. During the festivities following the victory over Kaido, Shanks arrives and chases away the forest Logia fruit user Admiral Greenbull with a conquerous hockey blast from miles away. A truly never before seen and unthinkable feat which shows us just how ridiculous strong the Yonko is. And yet this appearance means so much more for the story because it finally seems like Shanks is now ready to acknowledge Luffy as a great pirate. And while he doesn't want to meet Luffy, Luffy quite yet, after he sees Luffy's awakened form on a bounty poster, he decides it is now time to go claim the One Piece for himself. In fact, in chapter 1076 we see Shanks in Elbaf, the land of the giants, about to confront Luffy's rival Eustace Kit. And in order to do that, you need the four road poneglyphs, which are unbreakable stones created during the Void Century in Wano. The three that we know of so far are in Zo, Wano, and Whole Cake Island, all of which Luffy has already found, and it is wildly speculated that the last missing one is in Elbaf, exactly where we currently find Shanks. And so if Shanks wants to find the One Piece, he can either sail around and find the road poneglyphs himself, or just like Blackbeard, in typical pirate fashion, he can steal the two that Kit has from Wano and Whole Kick Island, leaving him with just one more to find if he already has the one in Elbaf. Assuming, of course, that he has someone who can read them, or he can just kidnap someone who can. But we do have to ask, why is Shanks only doing all of this now. If he really wanted to, he should have known where at least three of the Poneglyphs were and collected them years ago because he found them all when sailing with Roger. So was Shanks waiting because he needed Luffy to awaken his fruit and become Joy Boy? We just don't know right now, but there are at least three possibilities for Shanks' future going forward. First, he could be the one guiding Luffy to the One Piece so that Luffy can change the world for the better. This is the Shanks is a good guy version and how many of us have viewed him for the entire story so far. Then there's also of course the Shanks is secretly a villain theory, which has had a lot of evidence such as his meeting with the Gorosei. It is possible that Shanks has been working with the Gorosei or Emu all along as they try to erase the threat of Joy Boy and the One Piece forever. However, the third possibility is that Shanks is just using Luffy for his own personal goals. As we've already described, Shanks is only acting now that Joy Boy has awakened, so it's possible that it is a requirement to use the One Piece and now that Joy Boy is here, Shanks is moving forward with his own plans. And if either of the last two are the case, then the Red Hat Pirates could be a huge obstacle for the Straw Hats to overcome at some point soon. You see, Shanks is undeniably powerful with a bounty of over 4 billion berries, the highest active one in the story so far. Even Kaido considered Shanks to be one of the handful of people who could actually fight him. We do know that Shanks fights with one of the supreme great blades and he has the strongest hockey feeds in the entire story so far. And he's even known as the killer of observation hockey, blocking out future side users such as Luffy and Katakuri. We also recently learned that he commands a large fleet of strong pirates as well, just like Whitebeard did. Aside from his fleet, he also has numerous strong allies around the world, including, it seems, the giants of Elbaf, who are said to be the strongest fighting force in the entire world. So when the time comes for Luffy to finally meet Shanks, it could be a joyous reunion with lots of food and drinks, or it could also be a terrible battle and Luffy's most difficult test yet. But let's assume that Shanks is the good guy and he truly wants to help Luffy find the One Piece. If this were the case, it brings up a really interesting question that takes us all the way back to chapter one. Why didn't Shanks let Luffy join his crew. Surely the Red Hat Pirates could have taught Luffy so much and helped him uncover the secrets of his legendary devil fruit. Well, if you want to know all about what might have happened if Luffy had joined Shanks' crew, you can watch that video right here. Shanks for watching.